We now have an update uh, to share with you on what's going on at the Standing Rock protests. The violence is, it's, it's, it's traumatizing. Um, and I really don't know how to respond to it. Jordan Sheridan has been updating on his Facebook page uh, what's been unfolding. He says three are seriously injured. Another 23 people are transported by ambulance. An elder who lost consciousness was revived on scene. A young man with a grand mal seizure. Uh, a woman shot in the face by a rubber bullet with subsequent eye injury and compromised vision. A young man with internal bleeding who was vomiting blood after a rubber bullet injury to his abdomen. Uh, a man shot in the back near his spine by a rubber bullet causing blunt force trauma and a severe head laceration. Multiple fractures secondary to projectiles fired by police. Um, and then one story in particular, and we're gonna kind of Make sure everybody knows what they're in for at this point. 21-year-old uh, Sophia Wolanski was shot by a police-fired grenade. And I want to warn everybody, we're going to show. Um, Jordan had a number of photos of what happened. They shot a grenade, like a concussion grenade, at the protest, the protectors, the water protectors. And um, they're the kinds of things, as we'll find out, you're not supposed to actually shoot at people. Um, he had multiple photos. This is the one that he thought was the least intense. She's undergoing surgery. Her father, this is um, Sophia Wolanski, she's a 21-year-old who just went out to go join what they were doing at Standing Rock. Um, her father says that, released this statement um, about what happened. At around 4.30 a.m. after the police hit the bridge with water cannons and rubber bullets and pepper spray, they lobbed a number of concussion grenades which are not supposed to be thrown at people directly at protesters or protectors as they want to be called. Both her radial and ulnar artery were completely destroyed. Her radius was shattered and a large piece of it was missing. Her medial nerve is missing, a large section as well. All of the muscle and soft tissue between her elbow and wrist were blown away. The police did not do this by accident. It was an intentional act of throwing it directly at her. Sophia will have surgery again tomorrow as bit by bit, they try to rebuild a somewhat functioning arm and hand. She will be every day for the foreseeable future, fearful of losing her arm and hand. It's crazy, and and it's weird. We have we have people there. I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the coverage. I mean, it's it's trended on Twitter, but I haven't seen I haven't seen the the kind of coverage that I see in result in response to like Trump sending a tweet. So there. These particular uh, kinds of uh, arsenal, I suppose you can call it, they're using, like, like her father said, uh, they're shooting projectiles and things that aren't supposed to be shot at humans. Um, and rubber bullets. I remember in other conflicts and, and disagreements and conflicts with police, they shoot rubber bullets and they have these different ways of doing things. These things are lethal if they hit people in certain ways. And you're in the darkness, you're spraying water at people in the middle of sub-zero temperatures or sub-freezing terms, whatever they're yeah, calling it. Yeah, um, sub-freezing. And what is the objective here? The objective, of course, is to do things like this. It's not like they shot it and went, oops. Right. Because then well, what, what are you shooting it in the darkness for if you don't know it's going to actually hit people? In what circumstances are these things used? Do you shoot it at the ground in front of a, a charging crowd so you know that it doesn't hit anyone? Maybe. I don't know the protocol, but it probably isn't this. Or maybe it is. And that's just yeah, okay. That's worse. I think it's, yeah. Then you're in this crazy discussion as which of those terrible things is worse. And, and you shouldn't be. This is, again, a reminder that we live in a lawless society. We, there is, this is not a lawful society we live in. There's law for poor people, and there's no law for everyone yeah. else, especially the government, right? So the government invades other countries illegally, kills hundreds of thousands of people at the behest of oil companies. They then order war crimes to cover it up. Nobody prosecutes them. Barack Obama doesn't prosecute them. Right? And that's why Donald Trump is saying, that's why his new CIA chief is saying he loves it. He loves torture. going to do more of it. Right? So they don't go to jail. None of the people who criminalized banking and then crashed it on purpose while stuffing their money with billions of dollars, none of those people get prosecuted. Those people got bonuses. Uh, even after he loses the election, <laughs> yeah, st he still doesn't give a shit about those people out there in North Dakota, Barack Obama, who could snap his fingers and stop this right now, and doesn't. So what does that tell you about him? If you could stop this, wouldn't you stop it? If I could stop it, I would stop it. I'm sure if Wes Clark could stop it, he would stop it. If JR could snap his fingers, we would all stop it. 
because I couldn't sleep at night knowing that people were getting brutalized by our government and then go to sleep. Barack Obama can do that. Barack Obama has no problem. Barack Obama has no problem wagging his finger at voters for not voting, but, uh, but why do you think they don't vote? Because they know no matter who they voted for, the cops are gonna come crack their fucking heads in any way when they stand up to it. And if they do stand up to it, pricks like you made the NDAA 1021 so they can throw them in jail without fucking charging them. That's what's wrong with this country. Complete lawless society. There is no accountability. Banks, banking was is basically based on fraud it's their criminal activities. Banking now in the United States is a criminal activity. Wells Fargo just fired 5,000 people. Nobody has to go to jail. They were committing fraud on, their, fraud on their own goddamn customers. And here we are with video. Here we are, we know what's going on. We have hired thugs at the behest of Barack Obama's donors, meaning Wall Street and the fossil fuel companies, going out there and brutalizing the one minority lower on the social rung than him, and he doesn't say a goddamn thing. You know why? Because he doesn't stand for anything. You wanna know why the Democrats lost? Because they're clowns who don't stand for anything. Nothing. Did Hillary Clinton go out there North Dakota? No. Did Barack Obama go out there? No. Did they stand up for the teachers in Wisconsin when they took their unions away? No. Did they stand up for the Occupy Wall Street people when they were dressing their government with grievance? No. He did nothing. Hey, can you show me one time Barack Obama stood up for someone ever besides a donor? I can't. That's the country we're living in right now. And now that Donnie Tynahan's Trump is president, maybe some people will get pissed off about it instead of sitting here going, I wonder why Barack doesn't fucking do anything. I wonder why. I wonder, that's the question I was asked on this show. I wonder why Barack Obama isn't doing anything. You wanna know why Barack Obama isn't doing anything? Because he doesn't give a shit. Because he's a corporate tool, he's a Manchurian candidate, he is a wolf in sheep's closing, he puts a pretty face on the horrible shit that this government's been doing for the last 16 years, if not longer. And so now maybe people will give a shit because Donnie Tidyhands is now our president. Maybe people will see, hey, maybe the government shouldn't be doing horrible shit like this. Maybe they shouldn't be assaulting their own people who are nonviolent protesters. Maybe we should stop this shit, but we're not gonna stop this shit. We're not, because our complete political culture is rotten to the fucking core. We have two parties that are really one party and they don't give a shit about you and they only give a shit about their donors and get ready for more war because that's all this fucking country knows how to do. What is it about um, Donald Trump that makes you think it's gonna change? Because honestly, I agree. Now, the ugly face, that is the part I agree with you on, except people uh, embrace people ugly faces. I mean, already. I, I think just, we're gonna talk about later, the New York Times interview. I was watching the live feed of it because New York Times journalists were talking to Donald Trump and they were live tweeting everything he was saying, most everything he was saying, you could take it as. Um, and at one point, he said, oh yeah, uh, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan hated me four weeks ago. Now they basically, I'm paraphrasing, they're kissing my ass. Now they love me. And that's the way people, look, that's the way across the, the spectrum, Political figures are going to take this guy. Oh, he's in power now. We saw it as soon as he won. There was Republicans that when they thought he was going to lose, they're like, well, I don't want to lose my seat because the number one priority is keeping your job. And keeping your job involves taking all that corporate donor money and uh, doing whatever they tell you to do because then if you don't, you're not going to get on TV, you're not going to get those appearances, you're not going to get those, uh, the money to run your ads and do all the BS that you do to keep your job. So all this is about keeping their own job. When the other people die and get brutally maimed over these types of things, they're like, oh, I have my job, right? You guys still have, I have my job. So as soon as their jobs are in danger, that's where it may begin to change because their control over their jobs is the only thing they care about anymore. That's where, that's in this guy's face, him grabbing people by whatever, him talking about how he's gonna assault and send everybody out of the country, nobody cares. And he pointedly says, nobody cares. So, so happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I, I think Barack Obama puts half the left to sleep and not more. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have people came on my Facebook page saying, uh, oh, they wouldn't throw a grenade at her. I'm Barack Obama. Oh, somebody literally said, oh, I hope Barack Obama gives you a hug. So, and that was a, a gay woman who said that, right? Uh, about this situation, about the woman getting her arm blown That off. wasn't sarcasm? N no. And then, she, and, then I, she, and then the same person put a link to a, a story from the LA Times saying, they don't know who threw the grenade. Oh, I bet it was one of the natives. You know how the natives walk around with fucking grenades. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about knuckleheads 
who can't see through the pretty face of Barack Obama to see the shitstorm that our country has turned into. And right now, Barack Obama is turning over the surveillance state minus habeas corpus to a guy everybody's scared to death of. But nobody else seems to be worried that Barack Obama is doing that. And, no, and all that bullshit about holding someone's feet to the fire after the election, well, the, fu the fucking election happened. Can you hold Barack Obama's feet to the fire on anything? You can't hold his feet to the fire on dick because he doesn't give a fuck about you or the voters or the people getting their heads cracked in. He only gives a shit about the donors. And if he did, he would do something about it, which he's not doing anything about it. So there's no evidence to show that Barack Obama gives a fuck. You power the Young Turks. We do this all through membership. TYTnetwork.com slash join. Let's build the media that we can believe in.